challenge number one to set off our mini challenges is a rev battle. Oh. Okay, challenge number five is a challenge that I can finally feel confident about <laughs> after basically setting up all the challenges for Paul to win. This is, can you fit in your boot? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London. How are you doing? And welcome to the grand finale of myself and Seen Through Glasses collaboration on the SO Driving Challenges. Today, we have got the Economy Driving Challenge where I'm gonna be starting here at the SO Synergy in Reading. Sam is on standby at the SO Synergy in Woking. Now, both of these petrol stations are approximately 65 miles away from Britain's most famous rock work, Stonehenge. And we're gonna be driving there based on our results from yesterday's Seen Through Glasses mini challenges. So I won four of the mini challenges, which means I get 20 litres of fuel started in my car, whereas Sam only won two, meaning that he is only going to have 10 litres in the car. Because for every winning mini challenge, we get five litres of fuel to begin the challenge with. So I'm pretty confident that Sam, in his big five litre V8, is going to have to refuel, regardless of how clean and sensible he drives. Whereas I think that I can plough on a little bit, hopefully get through a little bit of traffic out of Reading. I'm going to be taking a completely different route to Sam as well so we're hoping that not only is it close but it's gonna be a lot of fun as well Sam are you there I'm here are you ready I'm ready I filled my car with this measly amount of petrol <laughs> I'm ready to go. I can't wait until you let me know how many miles it actually says on your fuel range <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty convinced I'm gonna run out of fuel <laughs> anyway, I'm very confident because I know you're going to have to refuel. I'm, I reckon it's going to be tight whether my Lamborghini is going to make it or not. And I'm the most, I'm the best economical driving. You're or... the most economical driver I know. I don't know how economical. I, I, think, I think I've accepted I'm going to have to refuel at some point. I do not think I'll be able to eat this out all the way to Stonehenge. So that, I think I've just accepted. <laughs> all right. Well, are you ready then to do the countdown? <laughs> I am ready. Okay. Three, two. One, go, go. And just remember, it's not a race, it's an economical driving. Right, okay, this is probably the only bit that I can speed up the process of starting the beast up and getting on my way. So the main factor that Sam is gonna have to work up, obviously, is when I oh, red light. The factors that Sam has to consider, I think the main one is the average speed checks, the 50 mile an hour. He is going to be going down the M3 and turning off down the A303. Down along past Winchester where I went to university, carrying on past Andover and into Amesbury where Stonehenge is. Now, I have to go a completely different way. I'm gonna be going across the M4, down a dual carriageway, onto the A303. I'm going to be joining the A303 about halfway between where Sam's going to join it and the finish line. Here you go, traffic. Ah, oh, this is just going to be a killer. I'm, <laughs> I'm already reading 48 miles. It's been about three minutes. So this traffic is not helping. I hope when I get on the motorway to eke out some of that MPG, I just want to get to the kind of Stonehenge area as quickly as possible. Fill up and then crack on. I I just, I think Paul, he's gonna be feeling so confident. It's going to be close, but I think I've got the upper hand having slightly more fuel in it because I was slightly better at the challenges yesterday. Or I wasn't, my car was. I know his technique, his eco driving technique, whilst he has the lightest right foot in the world, He's very smooth, he just likes to cruise. So I'm thinking if he's cruising at like 60 odd miles an hour, and I'm going at 70, which is the speed limit on the motorways, that is 10 miles an hour quicker. As soon as I hit dual carriageway or motorway, I'll be a lot more comfortable at getting the MPG up. At the moment, this stop start isn't good for my feel. I've gone down to 75 miles. Hello Sam! <laughs> Hello! I wanted Hello, to find out I wanted to find out what? what your range is saying in your car. 
high range started at 80 miles of fuel and it's gone down to 75 miles because I've just stopped stop starting Reading City. <laughs> Mine? Mine started at 50. Well, it's gone down to 48, but 50, I couldn't even, no matter what, I wasn't going to make it to Stonehenge without refilling. If I don't get to a dual carriageway ASAP, it's going to carry on going down and we're both going to have to refill. Okay, this is encouraging. I'm already on some kind of motorway, dual carriageway something. Finally, we have made it onto the M4. And my range is still saying 75 miles of fuel, so I'm going to have to try and maintain a pretty solid speed of around 55 to 60 miles an hour because having driven this car quite a lot on long journeys, that is the optimum mile an hour in the rev range to sit at to try and gain some miles back. was a godsend. I have now got 85 miles of fuel. It's not as much as I was hoping, but that doesn't matter. I have no idea how he's doing. All I know is he started with 50 miles of fuel in his fuel tank. By the time he called me to check what I had, he was down to 48, so it's heating up nicely. At 48, so this is the thing, it starts to eke out. It's weird, the, the range on this Jag. Am I going the right way? Yeah. Oh no, have I gone the wrong way? Oh, I've gone the wrong way. No, I've gone the wrong way! No! Oh God, I've gone the wrong way. I thought it would be a simple and a breeze and I was really confident, especially after my 4-2 victory on the mini challenges, that I'd win. My head is literally exploding. I don't know whether to hold back to around 50 mile an hour, try and build my mileage, my range back up, because I'm doing 60, 65, it keeps going down, even though I'm now cruising at 60 mile an hour. But my problem is, if I push on, I'm gonna lose, mile, I'm gonna lose fuel quicker, but if I hold back, Sam's gonna have time to refuel, and that will take five minutes. And if I hold back, I could take more than five minutes conserving fuel. I hate everyone. Here we are, we are going that way. I've turned off the A34. I'm about to join the A303. This was a disaster. I mean, I have no idea who I am. My fuel economy is ruined. I've literally got so many things going on in my head at the moment. I think Sam would have refueled already. He's too sensible to have not refueled and to carry on going. So this is going to be so tight. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to refuel. I just don't think I can afford to give up five, even ten minutes of time. It could be a queue. I'm not filling up. I'm pushing on. I am still on small B roads. Still haven't made it to any kind of dual carriageway or motorway. I can't believe how good my car is on fuel. I cannot believe it. But the things that are playing on my mind is where, where is Sam? On this road, somewhere, there is a Project 7 F-Type Coupe R. It could be coming up in my rear view mirror. It could be miles ahead. Oh my God, I'm stressing out. We've made it into Wiltshire. We have made it into Wiltshire. We are running low on fuel. My fuel light is on. I've got one bar of fuel left, but it is telling me that Amesbury is less than 10 miles away. Stonehenge is maybe 11 miles away. But what is Sam Satnav saying? What is it saying? My range is now 27. Just went down. Oh my God, there's a sign for Stonehenge. A sign for Stonehenge. Come on. First of the lights. First of the lights. I can't see an F-Type in my rear view mirror. This is nerve wracking. I think I'd probably prefer to see Sam in my rear view mirror at the moment. <sighs> oh my God. My heart is 
pumping. <laughs> I'm like two miles away and I've got 30 miles of fuel. I've absolutely smashed the fuel economy. Oh my God, how do I get to Stonehenge? Oh, there's a brake light up here. Are you serious? Oh my God, Stonehenge is visible. I cannot believe it. There's, there it is, there are the rocks. How do you get there? I just followed the signs and there's brake lights. How the hell do you get there? Can you see that yet? No. It looks pretty empty. There isn't a Jaguar there. Look, look. There's Stonehenge. And I'm driving past it because... How do you get in? Where do you park? To me, I've met... I've, I've, I've already been to Stonehenge. I'm literally not moving. I mean, that's good for fuel economy, I suppose. The fact that I'm not moving, my engine's off. Saving me a lot of petrol. That is, that was Stonehenge. I have not seen Sam. I haven't had a phone call from him. I need to call him and find out where he is. I'm gonna pull over the next lay-by, find out where he is. Sam! I've made it, but there's no car park next to it. I was expecting to drive right up and park in the middle of all of the rocks. I am. Where are you? Please tell me. You haven't made it. I have got about three miles. I'm literally still in London. Wait, what? <laughs> I have had a nightmare journey. I've been in traffic the whole time. I, I don't even know where I am. Wait, so how? C uh, what? You're nowhere near Stonehenge. How's your fuel going? <laughs> so, <laughs> we have not only have I lost, I've just had the worst, most boring morning of my life. <laughs> so, we have regrouped. Uh, I suppose the closest SO synergy to you. I panicked, I got we off are. the highway and then I had to get back on to get a petrol station. We're basically back in London. <laughs> we've got the motor, we've got the motorway uh, this side here. So that is it. I feel really smug. I was feeling confident at the beginning of the video. I kind of lost a bit of confidence when I was like, oh, do you know what? Sam could win because I was getting- I thought I was like, I've got a chance. I've got a chance. And then I bumped- Anyway, I won. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it for, as I suppose, how the challenges go. And I suppose you'll probably want to get your own back on me at some point. For sure, this, some point this hasn't been fair. <laughs> I ruined my life. So, that is it. Make sure that if you haven't checked out Sam from See Through Glass's mini challenges, which actually set ourselves up for this challenge, then make sure you head over to his channel and do that. And all of the links are in the description. For SO Synergy, thank you very much for allowing us to create this video. Give it a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, I will see you very soon. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Challenge number one to set off our mini challenges is a rev battle. Oh, you're setting me up to win. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge number three in the rain is top trumps. So I think we should go head to head and just pluck out figures. <laughs> pluck, out, <laughs> pluck out random figures, random statistics. <laughs> okay, challenge number five is a challenge that I can finally feel confident about <laughs> after basically setting up all the challenges for Paul to win. This is, can you fit in your boot? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 ha!